Hello and welcome to this one-off video explaining what you'll need for a typical IP system along with some of our recommendations for creating the best setup possible. A typical IP system all runs on your home network. The first thing you'll need is a wireless router which will then be connected to an MVR. An MVR is a main building block in a CCTV system and will typically power your IP cameras whilst also saving your footage. Most MVRs are an empty shell without any hard drives built in. In this case, hard drives will need to be purchased and fitted separately. Network cable is also crucial and will be needed to carry power and data between each part of your system. This illustration shows the cameras directly connected to the MVR, but you may also choose to add the cameras directly to your network. With such a huge range of cameras available on the market, it can be hard to decide which design is right for you. Flat face domes are our go-to recommendation for almost any outdoor application for a number of reasons. Firstly, with traditional domes, rain presents a big problem as the drops can distort the image and mark the dome cover when they dry. This isn't an issue with flat face domes as they generally have no plastic cover and their lens is covered by flat glass. Removing the plastic dome cover from the equation improves image quality even further as it removes the risk of internal infrared reflection which would also cause image distortion. Some flat face domes have their infrared LEDs and lens in a different window which allows for a stronger LED as there is no risk of this happening. Having the infrared and lens separate provides a solution to one other CCTV issue, spider webs. Spiders are drawn to the warmth produced by the LEDs and this leads to them creating their homes over the lens. Most flat face domes will feature IP66 rated weatherproof housing making them more than suitable for outdoor applications. The final reasons for us recommending these cameras come down to their compact design, their three axis adjustability and the fact that they can usually be mounted many ways, with or without brackets and junction boxes. If you find that flat face domes are not suitable for your application, there are many other shapes and sizes of IP cameras that you may find more suitable. Dome cameras are usually vandal resistant, which makes them a popular choice for people who want to mount their cameras closer to the ground. Tube cameras are specifically designed for indoors and typically have built-in Wi-Fi capabilities. Mini bullet cameras are favoured for customers who are looking for a more cost-effective camera. Standard bullet cameras have strong infrared LEDs, providing a clearer image over long distances in dark scenarios. And finally, PTZ cameras are popular for customers who wish to utilise the pan, tilt and powerful zoom function, along with the added benefit of some smart features. Once you are happy with your camera choices, it's time to choose focal lengths for each of your cameras. The focal length, measured in millimetres, refers to the distance between the camera lens and the image sensor. The bigger the distance, the narrower the field of view will be. There are a range of focal lengths available, so choosing the correct one for your application is important or you risk missing important details and objects of interest. Here are some example focal lengths and the field of view they would provide if used with a typical 4 megapixel camera with a third inch sensor. 2.8mm provides a 90 degrees field of view. 4mm provides 60 degrees, 6mm provides 45 degrees, and 12mm provides 25 degrees. You can see from the example images that the 2.8mm is far too wide and detail of the man's face is lost as the image is panoramic with some curvature at the edges evident. In this case, the 6mm is just right, covering a sufficient area and providing good detail. Some cameras use a very focal lens which can be changed manually or remotely to provide a range of views, for example anywhere between 2.8mm and 12mm. You should check the data sheets of your chosen camera for the exact field of view given as this will vary slightly between resolutions, sensor sizes and manufacturers. The next step in completing your system is deciding how your video footage will be stored. Our recommended method is to use an MVR. This stands for Network Video Recorder. Network video recorders will often come with built-in PoE ports which will allow you to power your cameras and carry your data directly from the back of the unit. They typically have multiple spaces for hard drives allowing days or weeks of footage to be stored. They also allow you to configure and manage all of your cameras in one place and come with a variety of channel options, 4, 8, 16, 32 and so on. Some people find that MVRs can be a little expensive but they are a vital part of any CCTV system and the most logical way to store your footage. Another common way to store footage is by using an SD card. SD stands for Secure Digital. SD cards are a popular choice for one camera setups as they are easy to install and cost effective. However, for systems with more than one camera, it is best to stick to an MVR as an SD card offers limited storage and is not very secure. There are also less configuration options and not all cameras will support onboard storage. When you've selected an MVR, it's time to choose your hard drives. We recommend Western Digital Purple as they are designed specifically for storing CCTV footage. They also have a low failure rate and are available in a range of sizes from 1TB to 10TB. When it comes to choosing how much storage is necessary, most people aim to keep around two weeks of footage and it's good to keep your frame rate low. Most IP cameras can record up to 25 frames per second, but this is unnecessary and will eat into your storage. 
With a frame rate of around 6 frames per second, your footage will still be smooth and much less storage is needed. We typically use this frame rate in our sample videos here on YouTube. The default setting for most MVRs is to overwrite the oldest data on your hard drives when full. Cameras that record with video codecs such as H.265 or H.265 Plus also offer up to 60% savings on storage space over H.264, so this is something to keep in mind when looking for a system. To be sure you're investing in the correct hard drives, it's best to check exactly how much space you'll need by using a storage calculator online. The final piece of the puzzle is network cable. Network cable is designed to connect one network device to another. In most IP systems, the cable will carry your data and power between each device, eliminating the need for additional power supplies. The connectors at each end of the cable are commonly known as RJ45 connectors. We often get asked whether CAT5e or CAT6 cable is the better choice. CAT5e can support 1000 megabytes per second, while CAT6 can support up to 10 gigabytes per second. However, if your run of CAT6 is over 165 feet, then it will match CAT5e's 1000 megabytes per second anyway. We tend to recommend using Cat5e as IP cameras use well under 100 megabytes per second each, so the bandwidth wouldn't be pushed at all and it would perform just as well as Cat6 but for a cheaper price. It may be tempting to save some money and choose some cheaper cable, but we would advise against this. CCA cable has poor flexibility, is prone to oxidation and corrosion, is generally poor for PoE systems and the cable runs must be much shorter. Cat5 cable should also be avoided as its maximum bandwidth is 100 megabytes per second and it is prone to crosstalk. When installing your system, remember that the maximum run of Cat5e or Cat6 cable is 100 meters. If your run is longer, you would need to invest in a PoE extender or a PoE switch. We know that setting up a new CCTV system can be confusing and there are a lot of things to consider when making your choices. The following are answers to questions that we get asked regularly when helping people with their system. Question one, what does megapixel mean and how is it different to resolution? Megapixel is basically a term for how many pixels your camera sensor has. The more pixels, the clearer the image. For example, one megapixel equals one million pixels. Resolution is similar to this. Resolution is the width and height of your camera's output. For example, a two megapixel camera would state that it has a 1920 times 1080 resolution. If you multiply 1920 by 1080, you get 2,073,600 pixels, which is equal to two megapixel. So to summarize, resolution is the size of the image and megapixels is how many pixels within that image. Question two, how will I power my camera if I'm not using an MVR or my MVR doesn't have any PoE ports? Some cameras will have the option to be powered by a mains power supply. Although this method would power your camera, it wouldn't put it on your network, which is why we recommend using a PoE injector or a PoE switch instead. PoE injectors and switches can provide PoE power to single or multiple network cameras, allowing them to record to an MVR on the same network without having to be connected to them directly. Question three, do I need a bracket or junction box? Brackets and junction boxes are optional for most cameras and aren't a necessity at all. A lot of cameras can be mounted directly to a wall or ceiling. It's best to check the data sheet of each camera to find out whether this is the case. Junction boxes are designed to keep your connections tidy and waterproof. Alternatively, waterproof tape can be used. Brackets are usually optional for dome style cameras. They may also have space inside the arm to make your connections, but the main thing to keep in mind for brackets is that they would provide your camera with a completely different view. Your camera would be suspended from the wall horizontally rather than vertically, and would also be a lot more noticeable. Question 4. Why does my wireless camera still need one wire? A common misconception with wireless cameras is that they are battery powered and thus completely wireless. Battery powered cameras are actually a completely different thing. Wireless cameras are just Wi-Fi ready. This means they would not need to be wired into your network directly, but they would still need a source of power, such as a mains power supply. Question five, will my camera work with an MVR from another manufacturer? This all comes down to the specific model and manufacturer of the units you are trying to connect. We recommend checking the compatibility list of each model. These lists will normally show the full list of functions and whether they are supported. One other thing to check is whether your devices are OnViv compliant. If the datasheet for your device mentions OnViv compliancy, then it will work with other OnViv compliant devices, but the features may be limited. Question 6. Should I use network attached storage? If you already have a NAS in place, then recording your CCTV cameras to this is definitely an option. As previously mentioned, you should first check the compatibility of the devices that you are hoping to connect to your NAS. You will also need to make sure you can get each device onto the same network as your NAS and that power can be supplied to them.
If you don't already have a NAS in place, but you are wondering if this is recommended, we would instead recommend sticking to a dedicated MVR from the same manufacturer for a more simple solution and for full control over configuration. The manufacturer's MVR will also come fully loaded with the appropriate number of camera licenses. MVRs often work out to be the most cost effective solution too. Thank you for watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please do by clicking here. Check the description below for links to our Facebook, Twitter and Google Plus feeds. Follow the link for our webshop and if you want more videos like this, click the playlist. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.